Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We've got another mini PC to check out. This one has a decent amount of performance for its small form factor. This one is from Geekum, and they are one of the higher quality manufacturers of these things. And this one has a Ryzen 8745HS processor, and mine shipped with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. And we're going to take a closer look at this machine and see how it performs here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from Geekom. However, they did not review or approve what you're about to see before it was uploaded. No other compensation was received and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this mini PC is all about. The price point on this comes in at around $549. As I mentioned, this does have a Ryzen 8745HS processor inside that's 8 cores and 16 threads, more than adequate for basic computing tasks like word processing and spreadsheets and everything. It'll perform quite well, as you'll see in a minute. It will output 4K60 to 4 displays simultaneously. You can also get a single 8K display out of this if you want. And all in, I was very pleased with the performance. As I mentioned at the outset, this does have 32 gigabytes of DDR5 5600 RAM. Upgradability, though, is a bit of an issue on this one. A little bit earlier, I took it apart. It wasn't hard to get it apart, but you do have to take those rubber feet off the bottom. And once you unscrew the plastic case portion there, there's another metal plate here that you have to undo. And when I did that, it pulled one of the antennas out from the Wi-Fi radio. The Wi-Fi still worked after that, but it was not a very good design here. However, as you can see inside, you can upgrade the RAM if you want, if you need to go higher than the 32. Additionally, you can swap out its NVMe storage there that you see on the right-hand side. It was good to see a name brand uh, solid-state storage, this one from Lexar installed. Now, the Wi-Fi card is underneath the NVMe storage. You can snap that antenna piece back in, but you have to take the storage out in order to do it. And this looks like it's going to happen every time you pull the case apart. So you probably won't be upgrading this one all that frequently, but it is upgradable. But I would have liked to have seen a second NVMe slot inside for better expandability and, of course, more dual booting options. But that antenna issue aside, I'm very pleased with the overall industrial design here. Those feet are easy to get back in. They snap back into place. The case beyond the bottom portion here is all metal. It's got a very nice feel to it, and it is one of the more compact, high-performing mini PCs I've looked at in quite some time. And as you'll see in a few minutes, the uh, thermal performance on this is quite good despite the small size, and the fan noise is not that bad even under load. As you can see, you've got a bunch of ports on this, so you have two 10 gigabit USB-A ports on the front along with a headphone microphone jack. Your power switch is over there. On the back, you've got a bunch of ports here, one for its power supply. You have two HDMI outputs, but both of these USB-C ports will do display output with dongles. So again, four total displays. And I also like how nicely labeled they are. So you do have a 40 gigabit per second USB 4 port here. This is compatible with Thunderbolt, so you can use external GPUs on this, provided you plug them into this port and not this one, because this is just a 10 gigabit port over here. You also have another USB-A port that can go to 10 gigabits per second. Below that is a USB-2 port. That's where I would plug your keyboards into. And then you've got 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, and I did test that a little bit earlier, and I was getting the full speed in both directions on my multi-gigabit uh, connection here at the house, so I was pleased with the performance I saw there. Wi-Fi, even with things attached to it, did struggle a bit. This is the Wi-Fi test that I'm running here. As you can see, it did drop off a little bit midstream. And this is something we see on a lot of these mini PCs, probably due to the small case sizes and all the metal that these cases typically have. So the Wi-Fi was okay. It's only Wi-Fi 6, um, but you might want to consider swapping out that Wi-Fi radio at a later time if you're not pleased with its performance. But I think uh, many of us who use these as desktops probably have the ability to plug them into Ethernet, uh, which is what I would recommend you do for the best performance. And it's kind of funny how most of these mini PCs just don't have good Wi-Fi, and this is another one that I'll add to the list. Now, power consumption on this is pretty efficient. At idle, about 8 to 10 watts. It will do about 90 watts under load. They've got a power supply here that's not all that large that delivers 120 watts of total power. So altogether, 
a pretty efficient device, especially if you're looking to use it as a server. One other note is it's got a full-size SD card slot here on the left-hand side of the unit. Why don't we get this thing booted up now and let's see how it performs. All right, so it's all booted up now. It does come with a fully activated version of Windows 11 Pro. We're gonna pull up my web browser here and just head over to the nasa.gov homepage. We are on ethernet. And as you can see, just how quickly it all just pops up here. And that's because you've got a lot of RAM and a lot of processing power at your disposal here. So basic websites doing work like word processing and spreadsheets and all of that is gonna be just fine on here. So I was very pleased with its performance. And again, I really like the form factor. They also include a Visa mount in the box so you can mount it on the back of a monitor. Fan noise when you're doing basic stuff like this is pretty much non-existent. I'm not even hearing the fan right now. So it does uh, pretty much run silently despite delivering this snappy performance. A little bit earlier, I did boot up my YouTube channel in a 1080p 60 video. I was getting a couple of drop frames here or there, and that was even with the latest AMD drivers installed. There wasn't anything noticeable, but uh, the Stats for Nerds here was registering a frame drop or two over time. I would imagine this would correct itself with future driver updates, but beyond that, it was a good experience doing the basics here. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 23.3. This is exactly where I would expect it to perform, given what it has under the hood. It is keeping up with its peers, including some more advanced Ryzen processors, along with an Intel i9 on a similar mini PC. Now, as far as video editing is concerned, you're not gonna do any major filmmaking projects on this, but if you're just stringing some clips together, you'll get decent performance. What you're watching here is a 4K60 project, and I'm just dropping in some random simple transitions. And as you can see, there's no lag or slowdown here. It performs quite well. Where it gets bogged down is when you're doing some more advanced types of things like color grading or dropping in effects. And here it's gonna take it a lot longer to render just because the GPU on this, while powerful for a small mini PC, is not up to the scale that you would get from an external GPU. So you could probably connect an external GPU to this device, but you're probably running higher in cost than you would if you were to build a gaming PC with a decent GPU inside. But for the basics, I think it performs pretty well. Now the gaming experience on this is better than you might expect. This is Cyberpunk 2077 running at 1080p at the lowest settings. And even in a more complex environment like what we see on screen here, we're getting between 45 and 50 frames per second. Not 60, but it's definitely playable. And the horsepower of these little computers is about what you would get out of a current gaming handheld. And so a lot of these games are playable. And as you go outside into the less complex environments like you're seeing here, you can sometimes get 60 frames per second. So this is a great little machine for casual gamers. I also ran No Man's Sky on it uh, at 1080p at the game's lowest settings. And here I was getting between 45 and 50 frames per second on the ground and a little bit more uh, in the space environment that you can enter into in your ship in this game. So again, uh, very good here for casual gamers who might want to pick up and play a game every once in a while. Altogether, it was a very nice experience for such a little mini PC. And emulation is pretty good on this too. This is a PS2 emulator running Burnout Revenge. For the most part, it ran at full speed uh, with this game and a few others that I tried as well. So anything from the PS2 and the GameCube on back should be just fine on this machine. So you can pretty much run most of the games of the 90s, 80s, and 70s all on this single box without issue. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 3,347. That is right in line with a B-Link mini PC running with the same processor. Also of note, the Legion Go, the first one with the AMD Z1 Extreme, also performs about the same here. And an Asus gaming laptop from just a couple of years ago with an external GTX 1650 GPU was also performing fairly close to what we're getting out of this mini PC with its single Ryzen chip on board. So this machine definitely punches above its weight with that Ryzen processor. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 99%. That means that you've got no thermal throttling issues on this one, even under heavy sustained load. What was also remarkable was how quiet the fan was, even when it was under load. You're going to hear it, but this is one of the quieter mini PCs I've tested in a while, and it's also one of the smallest I've seen with this high performance of a processor inside. 
So they've done a very nice job with the thermal design on this and it's able to keep the system running cool and quiet at the same time. All right, one last thing to check out and that is its Linux performance. We ran the most recent version of Ubuntu on the system and all was good. The hardware got detected properly, including the Wi-Fi, the Ethernet, the Bluetooth, and the audio, so that was good. 4K60 performance was just as nice here as it was under Windows. And of course, all of the applications we tested out on it worked as well. So if you were looking to use this as a Linux server or just a Linux desktop, this should not be an issue on this computer. And altogether, I found this to be a very nice little mini PC here. I really like the form factor. I hope they can make it so that you're not pulling antennas out of it every time you want to get inside to do a RAM upgrade. But beyond that, it feels very nicely put together. I like how well performing it is for its form factor. And I've been uh, very pleased with the machines I have looked at from Geekum over the last year or so that they've been sending them to us. This also comes with a three-year warranty, and they do have a 90-day money-back guarantee on it as well. I would imagine you have to do that with them directly, um, but overall, I think as many PCs go, this is definitely from a company that is producing the higher quality variety. So that will do it for this one, and until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.